Hello gentlemen, today's topic is depression, how to understand it, how to fight it, and how to end it. Depression is one of the most misunderstood topics online. So many people write about depression, give advice about depression, and I'm pretty sure that if you've been depressed before, then probably you tried many of those advice, and I'm also 100% sure that none of them has worked before. So today I want you to try to listen to a new approach, and I want you to try something totally different. Let me begin by giving you a very important example or a small story. Let's suppose that you fell on one of your arms and then one of your bones got broken. And so you went to a doctor and told the doctor, hey doctor, my arm is broken. I have a broken bone. And so the doctor checked it out and told you, okay, probably you have to take some painkillers. And then the doctor gave you painkillers and then you went home. But after a week, the pain remained there. And so you went again to the doctor and told him, Hey doctor, my arm is still hurting me. So the doctor also gave you another painkiller. And then another week has passed and the pain remained the same. And then you went to the doctor again and told them, Hey doctor, my arm is still hurting me so much. So he gave you another painkiller. Do you think this approach will ever solve the problem? An arm that got broken. And then you went to a doctor who gave you a painkiller just to solve the problem. Do you think that this painkiller is ever going to solve the problem? Of course, it's never going to solve the problem. This painkiller is going to make you feel a little bit better about yourself, but it's never going to heal your broken arm. So how can a person solve this problem in such a case? You just have to go. Put your arm in cost. Rest properly. Do not use your arm until your arm becomes fine once again. So many people mistake quick fixes for solutions. They try to use quick fixes to solve big problems such as depression and as a result, they end up not solving the problem at all. Let me give you another example. Let's suppose that we have a tree and you want to cut one of the branches in such a way that it never grows again. And so you cut the branch of the tree, but after some time, the branch grew once again. Did you solve the problem? Of course, no. So. The branch grew after one year and then you went and cut it again and then after another year the branch grew again and this will keep happening for the rest of your life. What is the solution in such a case? The solution in such a case is cutting the root. What we're talking about in here is solving a problem versus trying to use a painkiller in order to make the problem hurt less. This is the approach that so many people try to use with depression. They think that depression is something that has no reason and so they try to mute it. They try to silence it. They try to stop it by painkillers, by medication, by so on. And so the problem never goes away. As soon as the person, and according to like all of the studies, you might want to check online and see any of those studies online, which will tell you that as soon as the depressed person stops the medication, the pain of the depression becomes much worse and it becomes back once again because after all the person never solved the problem the person never dealt with the problem the person only used the painkiller to silence the problem for some time and even while using depression medication that pain might sometimes remain there and might even resurface even if the person is using a medication by the way i'm not saying that medications are bad at all this is not what i'm trying to say but what i'm trying to say is there is always a reason there is always something that is happening at the back of your mind that is causing this depression and until you treat this reason for good, the problem is always going to remain there. Before you understand why depression happens, you have to understand why emotions happen in the first place. Some people think that emotions are there to bother you. Some people think that emotions are there in order to make you feel bad about yourself. But in fact, emotions are there to motivate you to achieve certain important goals that your mind wants you to achieve. For example, let's suppose that you were working in a dangerous neighborhood. A place where someone was killed before, where there are like lots of thieves, uh, thugs and whatever. And then your mind realized that you are in danger. What do you think your mind will do in such a case? Probably your mind is going to make you feel afraid. Does your mind want to bother you in such a case? Of course, no. Your mind wants you to feel afraid because it wants to motivate you to move away from that dangerous neighborhood. Your mind wants you to move away from the thing that might harm you. And this is why it's using fear as a motivator. So emotions are not there to bother you or to make you feel bad about yourself. Emotions are there in order to help you achieve certain important objectives that your brain wants to achieve. Let me give you another example. Let's suppose that there is a bully who bullies you every day. Each day you go to school or to college or to work, whatever, this guy bullies you and then he beats you. Probably you are going to hate him after some time. And in such a case, the reason hatred happened is that your brain wants you to move away from this person as far as possible. And so your brain uses hatred 
as an emotion to motivate you to move away from this person. So again, emotions has a purpose. The emotion does not happen with no reason. The emotion happens in order to help you achieve a certain important objective. A third example, let's suppose that you have an exam after three days and that this exam is very important for you and that you didn't study anything. Probably your mind is going to make you feel anxious. Probably your mind is going to make you feel worried. And the reason your mind is going to make you feel anxious and worried is that your mind wants to motivate you to prepare yourself for the exam and to study. So in all of those examples, the one common thing is that emotions always have a purpose but people sometimes think that emotions are purposeless things that are there in order to bother them and to make them feel bad and this is why most people fail to deal with emotional problems and not just depression so what depression is actually what depression is all about depression is an emotion that your brain uses contrary to common beliefs in order to motivate you to get back something really important that matters to you that was lost Depression is an emotion that your brain uses when hope is lost in getting something that truly matters to you. If there is something that you truly care about in life, and then your brain realizes that you are probably not ever going to get this thing, your brain is going to use depression as a state of protest in order to tell you, I'm not letting you enjoy your life, I'm not letting you have fun, I'm not letting you find anything in life meaningful until you bring back the hope that was lost because after all there was something that you truly cared about something that you really wanted to happen but this thing doesn't seem to happen and your brain does not believe that's going to happen so it's sending you the emotion of depression in order to motivate you to bring back hope and to make this thing happen now as soon as someone hears something like this they tell you no i'm depressed because of my genes i have genetics that lead to depression there is no psychological disorder in the world, including depression, that is not somehow connected to genes. However, it's a very big mistake to discount the whole process into one factor, whereas hundreds of factors come together and result in some kind of a psychological disorder. For example, depression happens as a result of so many things coming together. One of them is just your genes. Your genes alone can never make you depressed because after all, if that was the case, you would have been depressed since you were born up until the last day of your life. And this is not happening to you. There are other parameters involved. There are so many other factors involved. And the biggest factor, the factor that has the highest weight, the factor that's causing your depression most probably is loss of hope in getting something that truly matters to you. And because your brain thinks that this thing cannot be achieved, you can never acquire this thing once again, your brain entered into a state of protest whereas it's telling you i'm not letting you enjoy your life i'm not letting you find anything in life interesting until you bring back the hope that was lost and this is where almost most people get depression wrong they think that depression is something that happens for no purpose they think that depression happens for no reason and as a result they try to think of solutions that has nothing to do with solving the real problem that caused the depression in the first place those people then start to think okay maybe if i exercise the problem is going to go away maybe if i started meditating the problem is going to go away maybe if i started eating a healthy diet the problem is going to go away and by the way i'm not saying that those are bad things those are great things and i advise you to do them but they are not the problem. Your brain is telling you that there is some kind of thing that truly matters to you that is lost. And then you responded, okay, I will meditate. Your brain is telling you, hey, you have to get back this thing that you truly care about. And you respond by saying, okay, I will then exercise. Probably your brain is going to think that you are crazy. And when your brain sends you a signal and you do not respond to the signal, the signal is going to be sent in a much stronger intensity. So it's as if someone is knocking on your door and you're not opening and the person knows that you are inside and the person wants to warn you about something important and you're not opening the door so the person will knock even harder and you're not responding so the person will try to slam down the door and you're not responding the person will try to break the door and get inside because he has to let you know that there is a problem happening so if you try to respond to the to depression by appeal or by making it seems like there is no problem by making it seem like it happened for no reason by making it seem like uh okay probably it's happening for no reason because i have the improper genetics then your brain is going to send you an even more intense depression in order to motivate you to get that thing that you truly care about so do not think that depression is happening for no reason but you have to understand that the reason might sometimes be unconscious for example Depression might happen for a reason that you are not consciously aware of. And so all of a sudden you might find yourself depressed. Some people come to me and tell me, hey Farouk, I am depressed for no reason. Probably there's no reason for my depression, it's my genetics. No, you are not consciously aware of what's happening inside your brain. And this is why you are thinking that your depression is happening for no reason. But in fact, 
There is a reason that you are afraid to bring to the surface. There is a reason that you do not really understand. There is a reason that is resulting from your lack of self-understanding. And as a result, your brain is sending you this depression in order to fix the problem. And yet, you try to fix the problem by doing things that have nothing to do with the root cause. It's like, for example, you feel very hungry. You feel extremely hungry. And then you drink water. What do you think your brain will do? It will make you even more hungry. And then you feel extremely hungry, so you go exercising. And your brain is going to tell you, what are you doing? You have to eat. You have to solve the problem. And then you say, okay, I'm very hungry. I will solve the problem by meditating. And then your brain tells you, are you crazy? You must eat, else you are going to die. And then you keep ignoring the problem, and then you keep acting in totally different ways that have nothing to do with solving the root problem that causes depression, which is... Loss of hope in getting something that you truly care about, whether you are conscious of this thing or whether you're not conscious. And let me give you an example in order to show you how depression can happen on unconscious level in such a way that you might think that it's happening for no reason. Let's suppose that a person was raised in such a way that he became an attention seeker. I'm not saying that intention seeking is a great thing, it's a bad thing, but I'm just giving you this example to make things clear. Let's suppose that the person was raised in such a way that he became an attention seeker. And then this person managed somehow to study very well in school and to become the first. So this person managed in school to be in the center of attention. And then as this person went to college, he also remained in the center of attention because he was getting good grades and he was at the basketball team and he was a superstar and so on. And then suddenly this guy graduated. And then suddenly this guy got a normal, good paying job, and he got a normal life, and he lived a normal life without being in the center of attention. In such a case, his brain is going to protest. His brain is going to let him know that there is something wrong going on. And then the person will get depressed without understanding what's going on, without understanding that he had an important need that is currently not being satisfied. Depression happens when a very important psychological need, and not just a materialistic need, that is not being satisfied and so your brain is protesting in order to force you to satisfy this need this person might not understand why he is depressed after all when he compares himself to whatever that's happening around him in his life he will realize that he has a good job he has a good life he has a good relationship and so he can't really understand why he's depressed and so he would tell you something like okay probably it's my genes probably i have a problem with my genes and so on but the only problem is with this person's lack of understanding of his emotional and psychological needs and this is why the first step into combating depression and ending it for good is understanding yourself, understanding what truly matters to you, understanding what makes you tick, understanding the emotional needs that you have, understanding the very important desires that you have. Because so many people do this wrong by comparing their desires to the desires of others. Such as, for example, the person compares his job to other people and say, okay, I have a good job, so probably my job is great. This doesn't really matter to your mind. What matters to your mind is the things that matter to your mind. If your mind wants you to become an actor, then you will never feel good until you become an actor. If your mind wants you to become successful, then you will never feel good until you become successful. If your mind wants you to be a millionaire, then you're never going to be happy unless you become a millionaire. Now, some people might tell me, so am I destined to be sad or depressed until I fulfill my important goals or psychological needs? Of course, no, this is not the answer you can definitely feel good even before achieving your goals. So how can this happen? By bringing back hope. In order to end depression, you do not need to solve all of your life problems. You do not really need to become rich right now. You do not really need to solve all of the problems that you're currently facing. You need to bring back hope in such a way that your mind realizes that someday you are going to reach your goal. Let's suppose that a person truly wanted to be a millionaire. That's like his ultimate goal in life. And that this person got depressed because he never managed to do so. In such a way, is this person destined to be sad until he becomes a millionaire? Of course, no. As soon as this person brings back hope, as soon as this person convinces his subconscious mind that there is some kind of a plan that can help him achieve this objective one day, the depression is going to disappear completely simply because, and I'm repeating it again, depression is just a signal that your mind is using in order to let you know that there is a very important psychological need that you need to achieve and that hope is currently lost. So your mind is telling you, in a very direct way, you have to bring back hope right now, else I will keep you depressed, else I will prevent you from enjoying life. Because after all, nothing else matters. Only that psychological need that you care about matters. And this is why I'm not letting you enjoy anything in life until you fix that need, because it's number one. Yet, 
you try to solve the problem by exercising you try to solve the problem by meditating and again guys i'm not trying to like put down those things or say that they are bad things they are great things i personally exercise and i personally recommend meditation for all of you but it's not the solution you have to solve the problem you have to solve the root cause it's like the same example that i gave in the beginning of the ex uh, the, the video somebody's bone got broken and then he's trying to fix the problem by taking a painkiller imagine that you fell on your arm and your arm broke and then he said okay i will solve this problem by meditating meditating is not going to do anything to you if you want to solve this problem you can't repeat affirmations and say okay my arm is getting better my arm is fine no you have to go to the doctor you have to wrap it you have to put it in cost you have to rest you have to take calcium you have to have a proper diet until your arm heals only then your pain is going to go away don't try to solve the problem of depression by doing everything but tackling the root cause that caused depression in the first place. The second thing you will have to do in order to face depression is to develop a lot of courage. And here's why. So many of us try to bury deeply their psychological needs, their important psychological needs, because they have lost hope. Let's suppose the same example that I gave at the beginning of the video, that a person always wanted to be an actor. And then this person did not really manage to become an actor in the first few years after graduation. And so this person tried to find any other kind of job. That's, let's say that the person worked as an accountant. This person is definitely going to be feeling depressed because his mind wanted something and he's going against his mind by telling it, no, I'm not going to bring you this thing. So your mind is going to respond by telling you, okay, I will make you depressed until you start bringing back hope in getting that thing that truly matters to you, which is trying to become an actor because this is the thing that you truly want. And this brings me to another very important thing. In order to find depression, you have to forget about the whole world, what the whole world is telling you, and you have to focus on one thing, which is what truly matters to you as a person. There is someone in this group who asked a very interesting question, can money buy happiness? And my answer was as follows. The answer is neither yes, and it's neither no. The answer is it depends on who you are. If you have great friends if your life is perfect if you have a great partner if you are like happy with your life and marriage and so on but you do not have any money and this is something that is making you as a person feel horrible if you have been through severe financial problems that you are suffering every single day then probably money is going to buy you happiness not because money buy happiness but because this is the problem that you personally need to solve so when it comes to solving your life problems forget about what others think find out exactly what your brain is telling you find out exactly your psychology psychological needs because after all it's the fulfillment of those psychological needs that's going to make you extremely happy in life and not following some kind of another need that someone else developed because after all you truly want to do something that other people are doing it's like for example someone tells you okay i want to study something because everybody's studying it or i want to work at that field because everybody's doing it and i want to feel that i'm useful this is total nonsense listen to your own inner voice find out exactly your unmet psychological needs and try to fulfill them because after all your depression happened because one of those needs were not properly fulfilled. Now comes the question about bipolar depression. Some people tell me, hey Farouk, probably I'm bipolar. And I tell them why. They tell me because uh, I feel great about myself in the morning and then all of a sudden I feel horrible. Let me give you another example that would make things very clear about bipolar disorder. Let's remember that same guy who wanted to be an actor from the beginning of the video. If this guy truly wanted to become an actor, but this guy didn't really manage to do it in the first few years of his life. And so he decided to give up on the goal completely. Probably his mind is going to respond with depression. But then this person is going to try to distract himself just like any other person by doing things that make him forget about his initial goal, by trying to forget about the, the, the bad past that he had, by trying to forget about that important goal that he wanted to achieve and distract his mind from the thing that he truly wanted. His mind is going to protest by responding with depression. But while the person distracts himself, he will be feeling happy at least for some time, for a short period of time. But then a reminder will suddenly kick in and remind him either consciously or unconsciously of his unmet goal of wanting to be an actor. And so he will suddenly feel horrible. And then he will say, oh my God, I'm bipolar because I was feeling good in the morning and then suddenly I felt bad. No, you are not bipolar. You are having a problem that you are escaping from, that you're not trying to solve, but you are trying to distract yourself. And during the distraction, distraction time, you feel good about yourself because after all, you're trying to distract yourself by doing a bad habit, by drinking, by whatever. And then later on, as soon as your brain remembers the problem, it makes you feel horrible. If that guy who wanted to be an actor was feeling good one morning and then he started watching TV and then he saw lots of popular actors on the TV probably he's going to feel horrible all of a sudden even if he did not really understand what happened what happened here is that his brain 
unconsciously noticed that there are successful actors on TV and this reminded him of his already existing problem which is that he always wanted to become an actor but he never managed to do so and this is why his mood suddenly changed and then the person thinks that he is bipolar without truly understanding that he is ignoring his problems and that the conscious and unconscious reminders that we come across all the time remind us of those unsolved problems. No, you are not bipolar. You have lots of problems that you're not trying to solve. Very important problems that are directly related to your psychological needs and you are distracting yourself from them. And whenever you come across a conscious or an unconscious reminder that reminds you of those problems, you feel depressed all of a sudden and then you think, oh my God, I am bipolar. So, what's the third thing that you need to do in order to end depression for good? Depression is loss of hope. In, it's a very direct disorder. It's a disorder that happens when a person loses hope in getting something that truly really matters to him. It's a disorder that happens when a very important psychological need does not get satisfied. It's a disorder that happens when you lose hope in getting a psychological need satisfied. It's a very direct disorder that tells you you have to bring back hope. And so the thing that you can do in order to end depression for good is to bring back hope. Now, the question that people sometimes ask me, uh, can faith help with depression? It can definitely help if you are already a religious person. If you're not a religious person, you have to do something totally different. But whether you are a religious person or whether you're not a religious person, your objective should be one thing, bringing back hope. So if you are a religious person, definitely developing faith is going to help you a lot because after all, as soon as you believe that there is hope in getting back the thing that, that, that was lost or in satisfying that very important psychological need, then probably your depression is going to go away. So what if you're not a believer? What if you're not a, a religious person? In such a case, you need to build faith in yourself. You need to build trust in your plans. You need to build your self-esteem in such a way that you realize that your life skills can help you satisfy the very important needs that you have else you will remain depressed. And this is why so many psychologists say that depression is directly related to the person's coping skills. If you do not have the proper coping skills to deal with the life problems that you're facing, then probably you are going to get depressed because after all, your brain wants you to satisfy your important needs, but then you do not really have the skill to satisfy your important needs. Let's suppose that you truly care about succeeding in life, but you do not really have the skills to succeed in life. In such a case, you are definitely going to be depressed, not because of your genes, but because you lack the proper coping strategies. You lack the proper skills. You do not really have the skills that can help you become successful in life. And this is why your brain is protesting and telling you that you are depressed right now and you have to find some kind of a solution to solve this problem. So let me summarize what I said so far. Depression does not happen for a reason. Yes, it might happen while you are not aware of the reason. The reason might be at the back of your mind. The reason might be unconscious, but the reason is always there. There is always a reason for depression. Number two, depression always happens when, it, when your brain realizes that hope was lost in getting something that truly matters to you. Whether this thing is very obvious, such as one of your life goals, or whether this thing is something at the back of your mind that you truly forgot about long ago, still it's the same exact result. Depression happens when hope is lost. Number three, if you want to end depression, bring back hope. Fight back for hope. Do anything that would make your mind realize that one day you are going to satisfy those very important needs. Once this happens, depression is going to disappear because after all, your brain is not sending depression to bother you or to make you feel bad about yourself. Your brain is sending you depression in order to tell you, hey, hope was lost in a very important life area. Forget about everything else that you're doing right now. Bring back hope and only then I will make you feel good about yourself. This was the short video for today. Please leave your comments and let me know if you liked it. See you in the next video.